While the air defense systems of the Ukrainian army continue to improve by the day the Russian army keeps on carrying out operations that are ineffective. In recent days, the Ukrainian army has wiretapped two different regions of Kherson. Russian invaders have been caught in these attacks at the most unexpected moment during this assault. The Ukrainian army received assistance from reconnaissance groups as well as air forces. This assault resulted in the destruction of a military base as well as an ammunition depot that belonged to the Russian invaders. Immediately following the occupation of Kherson, the Russian occupants of the Carousel region established their military base there, which they later used. Because Cheplinka was located so close to the Crimean Peninsula and was one of the regions that had the least amount of prior experience with war, the occupants who transformed a large building in the city of Chaplin. Inca into a military base, did not believe that there would be a large-scale presence of the Ukrainian army in this region. On the other hand, one of the most significant regions for the Ukrainian army was the peninsula of crime. As a consequence of this, it was practically impossible for Ukraine, which was aware of everything that was happening, in around Chapline to refrain from planning an assault on the military base located in the region. Over the past several days, Ukraine has maintained a constant presence over Crimea with the use of reconnaissance drones. The two drones that were used to identify re-occupiers were both shot down in the Sevastopol region of the Crimean Peninsula just before they were shot down. The reconnaissance drones used by the Ukrainian army had located the military base in the town of Chaplin, Akae, as well as the ammunition depot that was housed within. To blow up this location was the objective of the Russian army, which was waiting for the opportune moment to do so in the face of the Russian invaders who were ignorant of everything. You're probably thinking of the Hamas missile system. Both the ammunition depot and the miniature banks were completely destroyed by the Ukrainian army. There are a large number of soldiers stationed. The fact that the ammunition storage FA facility located within the page was also struck by lightning increased the intensity of the fire. The exact number of Russian invaders who perished as a result of this explosion is unknown. However, the severity of the fire demonstrated that the army suffered a significant loss in the city of Terek. There was yet another ammunition storage FA facility. The Ukrainian army was also victorious in its attempt to bring down the steeple. Because of the proximity of this teapot to the Geneva River, the Ukrainian army had been plotting for some time to eliminate these individuals. This is due to the fact that the Ukrainian army maintained missile systems along the banks of the river in a variety of locations. At the point where Russia and Ukraine met the river occupied a strategically significant location. Its territory stretched across parts of Russia as well as Ukraine. The Ukrainian military, which placed a high priority on this river made it a point to remain current on all events taking place in the river's immediate vicinity. Because of the vigilant monitoring of the area around the river, the ammunition depot in Terry's had to be destroyed. This was one of the reasons. This ammunition depot was destroyed by the Ukrainian army with the assistance of missiles provided by the Ukrainian air force as part of this assault, which resulted in a massive explosion. The Russian army detonated thousands of tons of ammunition, which included detonating the ammunition storage FA facility located within the military base. The Russian military loses not only its soldiers, but also its ammunition as a result of these explosions. The successful operations of the Ukrainian army are causing the Russian army, which is already struggling with a significant lack of military personnel to lose the few remaining soldiers as well. The video of a successful operation carried out by the 110th Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Army, which was shared from an account on a Ukrainian social media platform, was given its place on the agenda in the operat. The Russian soldiers shown in this video are killed by an explosion. This video showing Russian soldiers being blown up one by one is a distressing image of the losses that Russia has sustained. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at this video. Together, recent years have seen Ukraine achieve a great deal of success with unmanned aerial vehicle. This video, which gained prominence on the agenda in a short period of time, shows Ukrainian drones launching a bump directly above where Russian soldiers are positioned in a trench by using this bomb. Because of the bump in the road, the majority of the Russian soldiers' attempts to flee from where they are were unsuccessful and they are now making the best of their situ. The remaining Russian soldiers are busy fleeing but the drones hovering directly above them are keeping a close eye on everything the Ukrainian army does, which killed approximately five soldiers in the first bump, and then dropped bombs on the fleeing soldiers in the following seconds and killed them one by one as they were running away. Even if Putin's ambitious strategy for the future does have a chance of being carried out, the fact that the Russian army has suffered so many defeats up to this point makes it almost certain that the plan will be unsuccessful. The army, which is already low on ammunition, is unable to come to a consensus on anything, not even amongst itself. 
It is a well-known fact that the vacuum group is attempting to exert its dominance over the army and that it does not take anyone's opinions into consideration when carrying out its plans. At the same time, discrimination against soldiers of different races who serve in the military is something that never stops happening. In addition to these events, disagreements between Putin and the Afghani print are starting to come to. Recently the members of the Vanner Group, which is owned by Ferguson, have distributed a video. The conduct displayed by the soldiers of the Wagner Group in this video was despicable. It is initially unclear what one of the masked soldiers is shooting at, but as the video draws closer to its conclusion, it is made abundantly clear what the shooter is aiming at. At the conclusion of the video, the soldiers are seen standing up and moving towards the objective while simultaneously looping and OVS portraits are hung on a pallet. The most compelling evidence of the strain is provided by the members of the Wagner Group, who, despite the danger managed to draw and fire these portraits, no one is able to stop the soldiers from making each other throw up blood, and this happens regardless of whether or not their objectives are. It does not appear to be too difficult to forecast the actions that these soldiers with whom the level of tension between them is rising with each passing day will take in the future. Judge, our soldiers who are loyal to Caddy Ra are constantly being humiliated and discriminated against by other soldiers due to the fact that they are of a different race. Do not remain silent about this treatment, or the tension between the soldiers will become much more violent. Oh, you guys just made a statement that's going to completely alter how the battle is going to play out. This idea of Caddy RAVs, in which he states that he will establish a private company similar to the Vietnam group, appears to completely upset the existing equilibrium. The Ukrainian army is growing stronger by the day, in contrast to the Russian army, which is disintegrating in every way and is led by leaders who are at a loss as to what to do, unlike. It would appear that Russia has suffered a significant loss as a result of the achievements of Ukraine, which has maintained its unity and cohesion in governance, and is significantly more advanced than Russia in terms of both its army and its equipment. The fact that Russia is also experiencing significant challenges in political. Even after the war is over, the problems will not be entirely resolved and will continue to be in Russia for a significant amount of time. And Putin is a leader who is so inept that he is unable to keep anything in balance. In contrast to Zinsky, it is abundantly clear that his power is dwindling and becoming increasingly confused with each passing day. As time goes on, it appears that the growing intensity of the disagreements will force Putin to abandon his decision to. This would be the result of Putin being forced to abandon his decision to invite. So tell me, what are your thoughts on everything that's been going on? Do you think Putin will back down from his intention to invade the country? What are your thoughts on the day-by-day -day improvement of the Ukrainian army's capabilities to counter those of the Russian army? Your opinions and ideas are highly valued. Do not overlook the opportunity to share your thoughts by leaving them in the comments section. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine rages on despite diplomatic efforts, international assistance and economic sanctions, all of which play a significant part in determining how the conflict will ultimately play out. In this regard, the trip that Vice President Joe Biden of the United States made to Kiev just four days before the first anniversary of the war was a very significant event during the time that Zelensky and Biden were meeting in line. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine was unfolding in all of its complexity. Such was the severity of the situation that when Peyton arrived and Kiev sirens were sounding all over, Bagwood is currently one of the areas of the war that is experiencing the most intense fighting. The day before yesterday, there were violent confrontations in the backwards and the areas surrounding it. The Russian invaders' positions in Ukraine were the target of an assault by the Ukrainian army. A number of Russian military aircraft were shot down. Let's get together and discuss the latest developments on the battlefield and in diplomatic circle. The Ukrainian army has continued to be a nightmare for the Russian troops that are occupying Ukraine. The incompetence of the Russian army and the inexperience of Russian soldiers is made abundantly clear whenever we examine the developments in the conflict zones. On the other hand, the success of the Ukrainian army is continuing too. The Ukrainian army launched an assault on the positions held by Russian invaders, not too far from the city of Badmouth in Donna Scott. Last the other day, tank fire from the Ukrainian side was directed toward the positions held by the invaders, the Vassal Fragment, and to the south of Ivanov Sky. Drone cameras were used to capture footage of the Ukrainian Army's 5th Assault Regiment, carrying out a mission success. The video makes it abundantly clear that the tanks belonging to the Ukrainian Army are capable of deathly navigating obstacles and firing with pinpoint accuracy. This operation is not the only one in which the Ukrainian army is searching the embankment for intruders. The soldiers from the Wagner Group embankment were also captured by the soldiers from the Ukrainian 3rd Assault Brick. Murderers operating in a snowy region in Badmouth are the ones responsible for carrying out this attack. Drones operated by the Ukrainian government were tasked with following the Wagner Group soldiers while they engaged in open target operations. 
murders were used to kill members of the Wagner Group by the soldiers of the 3rd Assault Brigade, but they waited for the perfect opportunity to do. The mortars began firing as soon as the invaders had gathered together in one area, while others attempted to get away. Many of the occupants ended up dying there and then. However, by the time the second and third shots were fired, every single occupant that was on the target had been eliminated. Although the Eden and armed forces did not provide specific information regarding these, they did announce that hostile troops and positions in the background area were destroyed. The announcement came from the general staff in a new statement, which stated that members of the Defense Forces Aviation had shot down hostile aircraft. The following is a statement that was released by the general staff of the Ukraine. Our military personnel were successful in preventing an enemy SU-25 aircraft to Orlan Tant and a Lancet 3 kamikaze drone from carrying out their missions over the course of one day. The statement made by the Ukrainian military did not offer any specifics or details. In spite of this, it is generally believed that the invading forces were successful in shooting down their drones in the backmost region. This is on account of the fact that the conflict's core has been focused on investment for the past three. Putin needs to capture backward in order to realize the goals that he has in mind. But despite the thousands of reinforcements and dozens of new attacks that he has launched in the region, he continues to fail. A new video that was circulated on social media brought to light the ineffectiveness of the Russian military forces. Over 2 million different people have watched this video, so, the video depicts Russian invaders and Ukrainian soldiers engaging in a fierce firefight with each other. The viewers are left in a state of excitement after seeing the images, which are believed to have been captured by the camera that was mounted inside the helmet of the Ukrainian soldier. Two Ukrainian soldiers were ambushed while they were in the trench by Russian soldiers. Two Ukrainian soldiers were able to drive back them, who are estimated to number around 10 individuals. In addition to that, only one of these soldiers engaged in combat with the intruders. The Ukrainian Solider initially opens fire with a bazooka on the territory that is being invaded by the Russian troops. After that, he uses a machine gun to start shooting at the Russian invaders. The soldier also receives periodicals and other essential supplies from his other. The soldier who is engaged in combat with the Russian invaders is also seen throwing grenades at frequent intervals. The Russian soldier can be seen approaching the trench at about the halfway point of the video, which is longer than five minutes. This invader is immediately engaged by the Ukrainian Solider who either captures or kills him for the remainder of the conflict. The only sound that has been heard is the gunfire coming from the Russian. A single Ukrainian soldier was able to successfully repel an approximately 10-person Russian unit. This video provides further evidence that the Russian soldiers are inexperienced while simultaneously demonstrating the bravery and accomplishment of the Ukrainian soldiers. Even though fierce fighting was still going on at the front, there was an unexpected turn of events on on Monday, Joe Biden, the vice president of the United States, made a trip to Kiev. Before this visit, there was no public announcement made about it. Biden was caught off guard when he was informed that this visit. So what does Vice President Biden's trip to Kiev signify? Which topics did he specifically focus on during his time here? Let's look into the specifics together. Widespread in the United States and its weight serves to announce its arrival in Cuba. As the one-year anniversary of Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine drew near Vice President Joe Biden wrote the following. Today, I'm in Kiev to meet with President Zelensky and reaffirm our firm commitment to Ukraine's democracy, sovereignty, and territorial integrity during our converse. The purpose of Vice President Biden's trip to Kiev for days before the first anniversary of the start of the war was to send a message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. By paying a visit to Ukraine, Vice President Biden conveyed the message that the United States is on the side of Ukraine and that Vladimir Putin will not get what he wants. After his conversation in private with Zelensky, Biden issued a statement to Information about the eight packages that will be sent to Ukraine was provided in the statement that was released since the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine. The United States has pledged to maintain the substantial aid that it has been providing to that country. In his statement, Vice President Joe Biden mentioned the following information regarding the aid provided. Thus, together with partner countries, we have deployed nearly 700 tanks, thousands of armored vehicles, 1,000 artillery systems, more than 2 million rounds of artillery ammunition, more than 50 advanced missile systems, and a red face system. The President of the United States also discussed what was included in the new age package. The effectiveness of the Ukrainian armed forces will significantly improve after the implementation of this age. Ammunition for him. OR's missile systems, howitzer artillery, air surveillance radars and FGM-148 Javelin anti-tank rocket systems will be included in the assistance package provided by the United States. 
In addition, fresh sanctions from the United States against Russia are anticipated to take effect this week. It was announced that Japan would also help Ukraine on the same day that Vice President Biden visited this. At the symposium in Tokyo, the Prime Minister of Japan, Fuo Kai, made the announcement that Japan will provide financial assistance to Ukraine in the amount of $5.5 billion. He stated that this assistance would be put toward the rebuilding of Ukrainian infrastructure that had been destroyed by the Russian invaders. Sanctions are causing a reduction in the size of the Russian military while aid of a military social and humanitarian nature is helping the Ukrainian army to grow stronger by the day. As a result of earlier sanctions, most Western and European countries have completely stopped doing business with Russia. The economic might of the nation has been diminished as a result of this situation. The Russian people are unable to take the severe economic conditions any longer on the streets. There are increasingly more protests against the Occupa. Putin is being pressured from every angle. One wonders how Vladimir Putin will make up for these losses. Losses? What kind of ideas do you have? How much longer will Vladimir Putin be able to keep the war going with inexperienced soldiers and a Russian population that is opposed to the occupation of the ass? What exactly led to the success of the Ukrainian army's Will aid provided by the United States to Ukraine affect the way the war is fought? Your opinions are very interesting to us. Keep an eye out for further developments. Explosions following one another in the Black Sea. The Russian armies being hemmed in at this point in time. The Kremlin activated its red alert system after an entire fleet of ships was taken out. Following the activation of this warning system, a state of strict administration was declared in Crimea. An extremely serious uprising has been started by local groups in Crimea as a direct response. By taking advantage of the chaos in the Black Sea, Ukraine was able to inflict a significant amount of damage on Russia. In the most recent days, there have been significant breakthroughs in the conflict between Russia. It has been observed that Ukraine has utilized the benefits it has obtained until the very end in recent times. But with the most recent blow to Putin's fleet of ships, this has come to an end. Russia is surrounded on all sides by hostile nations. The operation that took place in the Black Sea is of such high quality that it will be immortalized in naval battles with golden letter. However, the shipment of hams from the United States to Ukraine was without a doubt the most significant aspect of this operation. In every operation, the hams demonstrates both the impact, strength of its weapons and the battlefield practicability of their deployment. In recent days, Russia has taken steps toward carrying out an operation over the Black Sea. On the basis of this operation, destroyers were stationed in certain locations. In close proximity to Odessa's port is a form of retaliation. The intelligence services of the Ukraine have decoded certain conversations. Israel is largely responsible for this recent advancement in Ukraine's intelligence community, which was the product of extensive research because Israel is home to one of the most respected intelligence agencies in the entire. It has provided Ukraine with a significant amount of assistance in this area. Because Ukraine was able to obtain this information, the Ukrainian army was able to take the necessary steps to organize an operation, and this information served as the operation's basis. The strategy involved bringing the Russian fleets in the Black Sea to an absolute standstill, and it was only partially successful. The status of Russia as the dominant power in the Black Sea is currently facing significant challenges. As soon as he learned that there would be an operation in which ships would be taken out of Sevastopol near the port of Odessa in Ukraine, he took immediate action. The Ukrainian army, having devised a cunning strategy, came to the conclusion that it would be beneficial to lay himars along the coast of the port of Ode. It was common knowledge among all parties involved that these mister possessed the ability to wipe out an entire fleet. However, the most important aspect of this situation was the attack that was going to be carried out by long-range patriots. Specifically, those long-range patriots are the third most populous team in the United States. These were the weapons that ultimately determined the outcome of World War I however. Because he ultimately chose to give them, he stoked a very serious conflict that involved a number of different nations. When the Russian fleet began operations with the ship, the primary objective of the plan formulated by the Ukrainian army was to disrupt any potential supply lines by attacking the port of Sevastopol. This was done in response to the presence of the. As a result of the destroyer's irresponsible failure to finish the scan hymns and a cube came out on top in the battle. However, Everything was completely different after a significant error was made while the operation was being carried out. Calculating the approximate speeds of the ships and making a prediction regarding how long it will take to enter. The range of the hymns were the first steps that led to the Ukrainian intelligence agency receiving information regarding the beginning of the operation. Additionally, the Ukrainian army started their counter-operation when it was learned that the Russian ships would come into range by the Hamas at the end. 
The Ukrainian Air Force immediately dispatched a large number of flag officers from the previous night in order to calculate the exact distance in order to prepare for the impending attack, approximately four hours. It was exactly five hours later when the Ukrainian army fired the hymns, but no one was able to alert the ships because the missiles fired also hit the communication network at the Sevastopol. This particular aspect of the natural world would make it difficult for Ukraine to carry out its operations. When Ukraine began firing the Hamas from its line of defense, Russia responded with a counterattack from its destroyers. However, the Ukrainian military's true objective was not the Hamas, but rather the return of the Comet Kazi unmanned aerial vehicle. One of the kamikaze planes flew towards the destroyers and detonated its bomb in the section of the ship that housed the fuel tank. When the ship exploded, dozens of Russian soldiers were still standing outside when the explosion occurred. After this incident, other ships took action to rescue Russian personnel, including soldiers and other person. However, they were unaware that they would be an easy target for the HIMAR attacks carried out by the Ukrainian army. And despite the fact that sheep sustained significant damage as a result of Ukraine firing Hamas missiles, when the ships moved to return as quickly as possible, the Hamas started struggling to save as many sheep as they possibly could. After that unmanned aerial vehicles designed to kill in kamikaze attacks were dropped on them, one after the the Russian army experienced very significant casualties. As a direct consequence of this operation, a significant number of soldiers were killed in addition to the loss of three destroyer ships during the battle. After hearing this, Putin completely lost it. After receiving this information, the Kremlin immediately issued a red alert and signed a number of very harsh decisions regarding. However, this was only the beginning of the anger that the people of Crimea would feel. Russia has maintained its occupation of Crimea for a significant amount of time. It is impossible to forecast precisely what will take place in Crimea given the authoritarian approach that Russia is taking to this process. Because Russia suffered such a significant loss of power in the Black Sea, it came to the conclusion that it needed to declare a state of emergency in crime. Right away after this decision, the fire group, which had been actively involved in actions in Crimea, continued their involvement there, tried to rebuild when the fire group that had been rebuilding took everyone out into the streets and began to clash with the Russian soldiers. Since it has been a topic of discussion in the majority of the media around the world, the fact that Russian soldiers are not wanted in Crimea has been there for some. There has been no one to react in response. But the Kremlin has been thrown into complete confusion. After Vladimir Putin came to the realization that he could no longer govern Crimea, he immediately set in motion a series of very serious actions in spite of the fact that what is occurring in Crimea is not being completely covered by the media. The information that we have obtained suggests that an excessive number of people are being conscripted as a component of the mobile. It was already common knowledge that a significant number of these enlistees belonged to underrepresented groups. However, the recruitment of precisely 40,000 soldiers from crime, which has a population of 170,000 was met with a reaction from associations for the elimination of minority rights and the possibility of genocide. The practice of sending locals to fight as mercenaries without providing them with adequate protection has been labeled as a form of genocide by the international community. It is common knowledge that there are not currently any citizens of Russia who belong to the minority that supports Putin. The primary reason for this is that Putin treats people in such a manner that he considers these individuals to be of a lower social. Since the time of the Soviet Union, Russia has maintained these policies in its foreign policy. Because of this policy of assimilation, many people in the Soviet Union lost their ability to speak their native tongues. This was the most significant step that was taken in order to protect the unity of the Soviet Union. On the other hand, this kind of repression is accepting nations share one thing in common, and that is the fact that they always hold down, in the end, the powers that destroy even democracy. They do this by taking into account the interests of society that do not care about the individual. Eventually, these powers will completely disappear. We are aware that this is a problem that can serve as an illustration at the foundation of a dictator. But in light of the fact that we have seen that Putin's power has been teetering on the brink recently, it is predicted that it will not for a very much longer time. Alexander Lukashenko, the leader of Belarus, is responsible for betraying his close friend, Vladimir Putin. The situation for the Russian troops who are stationed on the border with Belarus is currently very preco. While the Russian army has been occupying Ukrainian territory for the past year, Russian leader, Vladimir Putin has been sending additional troops to the region. Putin continues to include Russian citizens in the army. Despite the decision to only partially mobilize the Russian military that he has taken, the number of Russian soldiers killed or captured in Ukraine is getting close to 150. Though, in order to make up for the number of soldiers that were killed in Ukraine, Russian commanders have started training new recruits near the border with Serbia. 
the Russian army suffered significant casualties during their assault on Sor Ramish in France. The Russian military is sustaining more than 800 casualties per day on the rear, most front alone, according to the announcements made by Ukrainian officials. Considering that, weeks have passed since the beginning of the pursuit to take control of the city of Bakhmut. It is estimated that tens of thousands of Russian soldiers have been killed. As a result of this, Vladimir Putin, the leader of Russia, has made the decision to embark on a major operation in order to increase the territory that is occupied in Ukraine during this opera. Russian troops would cross into Ukrainian territory from the border with Belarus and move in the direction of Kiev. The country's capital of Vladimir Putin's plan called for him to advance on Kiev with an army of 50,000 people and seize control of the capital city of Kiev in a matter of weeks. But the Russian leader's plans did not work out the way he had hoped they would. The Ukrainian intelligence service acquired the knowledge that Putin was amassing troops on the border with B. And as a result, the Ukrainian army was called into action. The formation of defense lines at the border between Belarus and Ukraine by Ukrainian forces was done with the intention of preventing Russian troops from crossing into Belarus. The Russian army did not launch any attacks during the several days that the Ukrainian army waited for them to before giving up and withdrawing from the country after some time. <laughs> It became clear that Belarus had prevented this military operation from being carried out by Vladimir Putin. The Russian military has stationed 50,000 troops in the elect region, which is located on the border of Belarus and Ukraine. Their plan is to enter Ukrainian territory and advance on the capital city of Kiev. However, Belarusian and President Alexander Lukashenko did not give permission for Russian troops to pass through his country. Luko, the leader of Belarus took command of his country's armed forces at the border and stopped the advance of Russian troops. There was a big brawl between Belarusian soldiers and Russian soldiers. The majority of the 50,000 troops that Putin had deployed to the border with Belarus were withdrawn by Putin. On the other hand, some of the Russian soldiers defied orders too. The tension between the Belarusian commanders and the Russian soldiers who refused to withdraw from the conflict increased. The commanders of the Belarusian army detained a large number of Russian soldiers, but they did not take any of the Russian commanders into custody, set up a camp in this location and demanded that the Russian soldiers relocate to the camp and wait. When Russian President Vladimir Putin found out that Belarusian soldiers would not let Russian soldiers pass through their territory, he ordered all his 400 air defense systems in Belarus to be destroyed. The leader of Belarus was unaware that Russia is able to exercise remote control over the AS-400 defense system. It has developed, however, Russia possesses this A, because Luchento's military defenses had become ineffective. He was forced to move closer to the United States and the countries of the West. The threats made against Lukashenko by the United States and other Western countries during the previous month are the reason why he is refusing to let Russian troops through. At the meeting of the United Nations, the United States and other Western countries gave a speech in which they mentioned Belarus as a supporter. The actions that were taken were in response to statements made by Western leaders who stated that they would work to prevent the support and that they should not allow the Russian army to cross the border into Belarus. You are probably aware that the Belarusian government is dependent on have faith in the United States of America for many things because Belarus is not a particularly productive nation. The majority of its food and technological equipment come from the United States and other Western nations. The leaders of the Western nations threatened to punish Lukashenko with economic sanctions and embargoes, which would bring the Belarusian economy to its. Chenko was compelled to cut off his previously cordial relations with Putin as a direct result of these threats. Lukashenko has come to the conclusion that Russia is losing the war, and as a result, he is attempting to maintain better relations with the West and the United States. Lukashenko has started to listen to the United States in light of the knowledge that Putin and his allies will be put in an awkward position in the event that Russia loses the war in. As you are aware, the economy of Belarus is completely dependent on imports. The collapse of the Belarusian economy, which would put Lukashenko in jeopardy, would be brought about by the imposition of sanctions on Belarus by the United States and other Western countries. Lukashenko was compelled to betray Vladimir Putin, the leader of Russia, in order to prevent this from occurring. There are certain nations that have provided. Since the beginning of the war, Russia and Ukraine have been at odds throughout the course of history. States that were at war with one another always had an ally on their side. Everyone was taken aback by Belarus's decision to take such a course of action. Given that the country has been Russia's ally ever since the conflict, the act of Alexander Lukashenko has caused a great deal of resonance in the Kremlin. However, this is not Lukashenko's first time betraying the trust of the Kremlin. By the middle of the conflict, the occupying Russian forces had been able to make significant headway into Ukrainian territory in a very short amount of time. The most strategic regions of Ukraine were taken by Russian forces, including Zapia, Donetsk, Kherson, and Lu. These regions are all located in Ukraine. 
These occupied territories are being slowly reclaimed by Ukrainian forces, thanks in large part to the growing military support that Ukraine is receiving from the West and the United States. The region of Lehman, which had been occupied by Russian forces for the past few months, was recently retaken by Ukrainian forces, and behind this event lies a mystery that reveals a hidden, an extensive military operation was initiated in the city of Lyman by the Ukraine, which had previously moved a large portion of its army to the Lehman region in the Donetsk region. Nevertheless, as a direct consequence of this operation that was carried out by the Ukrainian army, the city of Lehman was liberated. Belarusian soldiers were the primary factor that contributed to Russia's defeat in the city of Lehman. Subsequent liberation from Russian occupa. Chenko was attempting to defend the city from invasion by Ukraine when he dispatched members of his own army, as well as mercenaries currently stationed in Belarus to the location of Lehman. As soon as the Belarusian commanders in the area found a solution to the offensive being waged by the Ukrainians, they issued orders for their troops to retreat and began to withdraw from the city. The Belarusian commanders dispatched soldiers to act as but those soldiers did not report seeing the Ukrainian army and completely leveling the area. The Belarusian soldiers who were unaware of the offensive that the Ukrainian army was preparing to launch, fled the city of Lehman as quickly as they could and handed it over to the Ukrainian army. It's possible that the liberation of Lehman from Russian occupation was one of the most straightforward victories for the Ukrainian army to Vladimir Putin, the leader of Russia, is suffering a significant loss of power in Ukraine. He was not able to foresee that the war would last for such a significant amount of time. Nor was he able to anticipate that the Ukrainian army would offer such a significant amount of resistance to the loss of Russian territory. The presence of forces in Ukraine is causing Putin. On the one hand, the Russian army is demonstrating a significant amount of effort on the backward front, while on the other hand, it is attempting to defend the territories that it currently occupies. Many of the Russian soldiers who have begun to suffer as a result of the unfavorable conditions brought on by the war have expressed their desire to withdraw from the conflict in. The majority of Russian soldiers who do not want to fight in Ukraine are either citizens of ethnic minorities who live in Russia, or soldiers who were included in the army as part of a partial mobilization. Well, assuming that Putin chose the vast majority of the soldiers he recruited through partial mobilization from minority citizens, these minority citizens who felt for Putin and Ukraine say that Vladimir Putin does not value them, and star, minority soldier. This is despite the fact that Putin recruited the majority of the soldiers from minority citizens. Even though it hasn't been reported in Russian media, a significant number of Russian soldiers have already disarmed themselves in Ukraine. Because of the sanctions imposed on Russia by the United States and the rest of the West Putin's economy has entered a period of turmoil. And as a result, Putin is having a very difficult time meeting the needs of Russian soldiers serving in Ukraine. Now more than ever, Russian soldiers are openly disobeying their superiors and stating that they have no desire to fight in Putin's. In a similar vein, a good number of Russian commanders share the viewpoint of these soldiers. If the war continues in this manner, it appears that the vast majority of soldiers serving in the Russian army will either flee the conflict or surrender to the Ukrainian army. This is the likely outcome if the war continues as it is.